Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming back at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, we're going to continue on with our Painting 101. Now, in, in, the, in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing finishing touches uh, for our models. Now, what we're, what we're really doing is we're going to clean off the flock that has dried in the PVA of my model. So basically what we'll do is we'll take a model, we'll pick it up, and I will shake it off into my bucket, right? Okay, and then I'll use my dusting brush to dust any flock that might have uh, clung to with by static to any of the models. Now I'm not brushing the... Uh, now watch when I tap this to see if any flock falls. You can see it. I don't know if you can see it on your on the camera, but there is a there is some flock that falls off. That's fine. Now, when you look at this figure, you can see that uh, it's completely green, 100% green flock base green. There's no there's no imperfections. Okay, no um, what's the word I'm looking for? discrepancies or anything like that okay so and I got to be careful because I think there's wind in here or something and then I just brush off my models being careful not to damage anything okay all right so let me clean this off and be right back because then we're going to do the flag all right so now that I've cleaned all these bases off we're going to go ahead and do the flag now as uh, I'm going to actually use the paper from the card that came with the box just because, you know, just because I think that's why they included it to make sure that we could use it. Now, you could use a pair of scissors to cut along the lines, or you can use an X Acto knife. Uh, now, I did a little research and I found that, well, these are all pre Waterloo. These are all the. Uh, 1804 flags and this is the 1804 uniforms but I'm gonna base them up and use them in Waterloo anyway but I found that the 27th regiment and the 96th regiment were both at Waterloo and these other ones were not at Waterloo so I'm gonna use one of these two I'm just trying to decide which one looks the best um, this one says Valor, Discipline, Battalion, and this one says Valor and Discipline. It's done a little bit different. Or maybe that's 2nd Battalion, and this is just... Oh. Now on the other side it says Emperor of France... 27th Regiment, Infantry Laguerre. And then over here, Emperor of France. Can't read it. Can't read it. Of the line. Okay, so they're saying that that's the lights. This is the line. Okay, so I'm going to use the 96th line. That's the one. All right, so let me go ahead and use my X-Acto knife. I probably should use a straight edge. Let me go get that. Here. All right, I'm back. Now I've got this metallic uh, straight edge, and the reason why you want to do that is so you don't get any like imperfections in your cuts. You want it to be perfectly straight. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Good cut. And as you can see, I'm cutting on top of a cutting board or cutting mat. 
so that you don't okay. cut into your table or whatever. Get rid of the exacto. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat both sides of this flag with Elmer's glue, right? And then when I put this flag on there, we're going to we're going to wrap this flag around the standard like this. I'm going to find where these actually meet and then I'm going to squeeze it together and then form it around the standard pole which should fit perfectly right there okay but before I do that I'm gonna fold it in half to get it kind of prepped for the uh, banner pole action okay so you wind up having a little piece of paper that looks a lot like that now you can find flags online you can print them you can um, yeah, you can photocopy them from books. You can create create your own. If you were able to only find this much of a flag, just remember all you got to do is reprint it and leave a little bit of space, and you can you can put them uh, side by side. You can create your own flags basically. Okay, so here we go. You notice I'm applying Elmer's all over the inside of here and all over the inside of here and I'm going to put some on the outside some on the outside so it's going to be sticky so it's basically sticky all over and then I use my finger my mark one glue applicator to move the glue all over the paper now this paper this paper sheet that came in the box set is actually kind of a it's a printed glossy type paper so um, I think it's like glue resistant but we're going to uh, we're gonna press it into it and I've noticed it's starting to it's starting to warp which is good that's a good sign that means the glue is starting to get into the paper fibers okay this whole thing is really really sticky so we got the half fold right there. Now I've got to get it underneath and behind the streamers. So I'm being very careful. Bring it up. Go over his head. There we go. Okay, so we're doing really good right here. Now, we just line this up and make sure all the corners match. Notice my fingers are full of glue and they're sticky. That's fine. It's wet. Okay. And then once we get the corners lined up, we gradually move it in. The pressure. We gradually, like like you're getting rid of the air bubbles, towards the flagpole. Okay. Now once you get to the flagpole. You want to squeeze and apply pressure to the flag so that it forms around the pole in a circle. Like, instead of it just being folded in half, it actually will go around the pole like that instead of just laying like this. Okay, so you just got to squeeze it along the top, the middle, the bottom. And just take your time because as you work this the glue is starting to dry and starting to harden up and what's going to happen is that flag is going to be nice and solid okay now do I want a perfectly straight out the back of this pole flag no you want it to wave in the wind right okay so let me clean my fingers off a little bit Now what I've done in the past is I've taken my my brush and I kind of imagine the I got to imagine how the flag would flow in the wind. I would think that uh, it would flow kind of along these creases.
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this. See, that's a dark gray. I'm going to lay this brush like as if it was causing a shadow. And then I'm going to fold it a little bit inwards like that. There we go. And then I'm going to lay it on the other side of the secondary shadow. Take that back. I'm going to lay it on the other side of the of the white area, the non-shadow, and fold it back the other way. So you get like an S shape. So far so good, right? And then what I'll do is I'll fold it again back this way. So you get kind of an accordion effect from the flag. Okay, so you see my accordion effect, right? Well, I don't want my flag to look like that. That looks horrible. So what I do is I now stretch it out just a little bit. Not, not fully straight, don't want it to be fully straight. Getting the glue fibers off. I mean, they're gonna dry clear anyway. There, so now I got some, some breeze on my flag. See that? Okay, now when the Elmer's PVA glue dries, here we go, line the corners up again because it came unhinged. Okay, so when the, when the PVA dries, that flag is gonna be nice and hard. It's gonna be nice and solid. And, um, okay, this is something I just kinda, kinda discovered with you guys on this video. Remember I said I don't, I don't normally put my standard bearer in the back. I normally put them in the front because of the flags. Well, with me putting him there, with this flag and adding the wind effect, it doesn't really go past the back of the base. That's pretty cool. I could have put him back a little bit further. Next time, we'll learn. Okay, so that's what it looks like, but guess what? Um, I personally don't like these white edges around the outside edge of the flag. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait a few minutes, let that Elmer's kind of settle, and once it dries, We'll go back and touch up those edges. Give me a couple of minutes. Be right back. All right, now I've given it a little bit of time to dry. Now, I remember, I've got my uh, black lining brush out. And what I'm going to do is apply some black lines. I'm going to black line the flag. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along the outside or the, you know, the, the edge that shows white because of the paper. And I'm basically just going to color the white edge black. That's all I'm doing. By taking that white edge out, it makes it's just like the colors, it's just like the colors on the miniatures. By black lining the outer edge of the flag, it'll make that flag look even better. Okay. Now I'm doing the front side of the flag. because I think this is where the most white is. And you can see the glue hasn't completely dried yet, but that's okay. Now I need to get in underneath here. There we go. Now let's look at the back side of it. Yep, there's a little white, exposed white along here. Uh, 
uh, none down this line and maybe a little bit on the curve under here mostly not so much it looks kind of gray so that's good That looks super good to me. Okay. And, okay, another thing, uh, one of the final details that I do is I label my models. Uh, I get a, a Sharpie and I actually write something on the bottom of the, of the bases. So I know like what unit this represents. So, uh, because we know this is the flag for the 96th, I'm just going to go ahead and say that this whole regiment is the 96th. So I just get underneath here with my marker, and I, I almost said type. I write 9, 9, 6, and then over here I'll put... Ridge, okay. So you know it's in the 96th regiment. Then I will do that with all the models, all the bases. I'll be right back. All right. So these guys, as far as I'm concerned, are finished. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let this glue dry just a little bit. We're going to let the flock dry just a little bit more, and then I will be back with the money shot. All right, here is the 96th Regiment in all its splendor. Okay, so we're going to take a kind of a pan view of this. What I need to do is kind of advance it forward so that I can get behind it. And I'm not getting like super close on the models because when you're in a wargaming situation, you're usually like three or, you know, two or three feet away from your models. So I'm holding the camera about one foot away from the models just so you can kind of see what it might look like. What these might look like. Um, on the table. Let's turn these around. There, I didn't adjust where the flank company was. I just turned them around so you can see the paint scheme, the paint job, see what they look like in line. Looking pretty good. Now let's do this. Let's put them in attack column. See what they look like. Like that. What do you guys think? You think that you painting 101 was a success? You got all the skills needed to be able to put together a beautiful unit like this. All right, guys, thanks for coming out and checking out this tutorial. You can expect to see uh, a painting 201, which is the advanced techniques like dry brushing, highlighting, doing, uh, I'm sorry, dry brushing. fading, and doing eyes as well. well. Thanks for coming out and checking out this video. If you like it, please like it. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please do. If you feel like donating to the channel, be sure to hit the PayPal me link in the description below. And I'll see you next time.